Yesterday was the 20th anniversary of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone book coming out. And since that day, the world hasn't been the same. Son, your ego is writing checks your body can't cash. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Pop Culture Cult. I'm Sean. I'm Janice. And this is episode 32. 32. I made the mid-age joke last week, and now I'm not going to make it because my whack might hit me. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of stuff that happened in this last week in pop culture that we find interesting. We don't deal with the Kardashians because fuck them. Uh, so no. uh, there's like Moffat and and uh, Gaddis are talking about doing a uh, Dracula series. Uh, Nintendo's coming out with a new version of the classic. There's uh, Ben Affleck's coming back to do the Accountant 2. Like there's all, all this stuff going on. But there's stuff that we wanted to talk about because it hits a little closer to home. Star Wars. Going full DC. Uh, but first we wanted to talk about uh, what? Star Wars going full DC. That's what happened! <laughs> it's true. It's totally true. It totally it is. was what happened. It is. Uh, so, but uh, last week uh, we talked about uh, the Schmodown uh, and the late to the party week on the Schmodown. And so we really haven't talked about the Schmodown much on the show other than like, hey, go watch our friends from late to the party. But I thought we'd do a breakdown of the matches. A little bit of a breakdown. Right. Um, just because they were awesome. They were. They represented the geek fandom yes, very well. Yes, they did very well. Uh, there's uh, So the Schmodown, if you don't know, it's run by the guys from Collider. And what they have done is they've, done, they've turned movie trivia into a WWE kind of style uh, events. And you have good guys and bad guys, and you, and you have people in character and costumes and everything like that. But the matches themselves are not fixed or rigged or in any any way. They are they're, they're completely legit. It's it's straight out trivia, and they fight for belts. And there's a team belts, tag team belts, and they have an inner geekdom thing, which is kind of like their intercontinental champion kind of thing. And I got sucked into about. I don't know, six, eight months ago. And then within the last two months, I've gotten her into it. Because <laughs> we love movie trivia. We love trivia, period. But we really love movie trivia. Eh. You find find out all the random things you yes. don't know why you know, but you do. Why do I know that? <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, but so um, Late to the Party is uh, uh, two fans and some of their friends. And they sit down every week and they do a live reaction to each match. And they answer the questions, and they go through the whole thing, and they got invited to go to Collider, and be part, the, watch the free for all, uh, a few months months back. And while they're there, Christian Harloff, who runs the league, asked them if they wanted to compete, and they said yes. <laughs> and uh, and so this week was finally their matches. Um, the first match was on Tuesday. Uh, uh, it featured Robert and Vanessa, who it's their page on YouTube that does the. The, they do what we do, essentially. Doctor Who reviews and tailor, trailer reviews and movie reviews and Comic-Con stuff. And they're going to D23. I'm a little jelly. Yeah. Well, <laughs> when you have like a million subscribers uh, on YouTube, you can go to... 15K. Okay. <laughs> and a Patreon page. Yeah. Uh, so their match was against Team Action. Now, Team Action are uh, guys like us um, that are movie pundits. Uh, okay, we're not movie pundits. Are we movie pundits? No, we're just fans. We're just fans. Well, we'll fans. Team action pundits. Um, and they uh, play the bad guys. Yes, they're they're assholes. Yes, <laughs> and they do it very well. Yeah. And everything I've ever read, the two guys are really really nice. Yeah. Outside of their characters, um, the not this match, but the match before, they brought their moms out and totally did the switcheroo and like were prim and proper and shook everybody's hand and then totally ready to fuck off at the end. It was awesome. <laughs> It was so good. Uh, but uh, late to the party versus team action happened. They uh, uh, Robert started out with his hair on fire. Yeah. He got, I think, the first... Well, he, he got a perfect first round. And when you get a perfect first round, you get a bonus question. And he got the bonus question right. That only you can answer. That only he, so. he, only he can answer it. Um, so he went nine for nine. And he's only the second person ever to get get 
a perfect score and get the bonus. Uh, and Vanessa only missed, I think, two. Yeah, she was doing so. Awesome she was too. doing great too. Yeah. And the guys from Team Action had a really slow start, which is typical. <laughs> uh, and the second round, they have this giant wheel that sits between them. They spin the wheel. Um, if you don't like what you land on, you can spin again, but you're stuck with that one. Unless, of course, you land on opponent's choice or spinner's choice, because you're never going to give up spinner's choice, right? No. Uh, so uh, uh, so they, uh, uh, Robert and Vanessa went first. Yes. Spun the wheel. And they got? Action. Action, which is Team Action's, like, Number one. bread and butter, whatever. And if you go get a slice, that's which is, like, a, you know, a, a topic. Yeah. That topic is now out of play um, when they spin. Right. So if they had taken action, then there was no chance the team action could have could have gotten could have gotten it. Yes. Um, but they chose not to. And they spun again, and the one they didn't absolutely totally didn't want to get was westerns. And what did it land on? Westerns. westerns. Fucking every time. <laughs> The, don't fuck with the god of wheels. Yeah. It just there's got to be some god of wheels right somewhere. Oh yeah. And uh, so they they did really well with that. They only missed one, I think, in that whole section. Yeah. And then team action spun the wheel, got something they didn't like, spun it again, and what they get? Action, action. adventure, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> and they went on a tear, and uh, they had a chance of getting knocked out even before the final round, and they went on this tear, and it's just. We've watched three matches with them now where they've hit they've hit the action, action. adventure. Every goddamn time. Every goddamn I just just take it, people. See, see, you see <laughs> what happens it. when you're an asshole? You all the things come to you. Yeah. I and know. and I, I mean, I don't I don't blame Robert and Vanessa at all. I mean you're you know, you're in front of the lights, you're making a split decision. They even said afterwards because they critique they watched, they watched their own video their own, their own video yeah. and critiqued it and they were both yelling <laughs> at the tv take action take action <laughs> take action adventure yes. and, and and we were doing the same thing you know it's just it's just one of those things yeah it, it was just it, you take it off the board even if you miss one or two you're only giving up a couple of points instead of having them go on a run of six or eight of questions yeah. or whatever and you're all of a sudden they give them 20 extra points um they got to the final round uh, uh, you get you pick three numbers out of like one out of twenty five or whatever, and uh, and then they each one of those numbers is with a category, and the categories and everything changes with each game, and uh, and so and the first question is worth two points, the second question is worth three, three, and the fourth, uh, third question is worth five, points. five, and you um one person has to answer the two-point question. One person has to answer the three-point question. And then you can work together for the five-point question. And that's important because if you get, like, classics and you have a strong person in westerns or whatever, you don't want to use the western person for classics. You almost have to take that grenade kind of thing. And which is kind of what happened to Robert and Vanessa. Uh, they got... I don't remember what the categories was, the first one, but... Uh, Robert took it, and he missed it. Might have it. been classics. Actually. It might have been class. Oh, it was classics because it was uh, played uh, English actress who had oh, yeah, played and Gone with the Wind, Gone with the Wind, or whatever. And, and it, I, I, Vivian I Lee. <laughs> still don't. know. I didn't know she was English, but still don't know. Um, but the so Robert took that question. They got it wrong, and then Vanessa took got the second question, and it was sports movies. <laughs> And it had to deal with blue chips, which I know blue chips because I play a lot of basketball. Never heard of the movie. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then they hit their five-point question, but Team Action hit every question right after the first round. And one on a tear during their when they got the pie wedge, and then all three of the last questions. And they won 31 to 28. 31 points is the highest scoring game ever done uh, by a team. Um you're, a lot of teams are lucky to get in the low 20s. Yeah, um, yeah we've seen some where they're like, it's like 13, 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, 28 is absolutely no, no slouch yeah, either. So. Yeah, they, I think it's like the, it's a tech top five points or whatever. Just really, really, really happy for them. Even though they lost the match, they won the day. Yeah. 
and that's way more important. They're definitely going back, and they're probably going to go on some tear. Christian was the proud papa. He's yes. Like, he was like, can I find Dallin, or can I find yes, Dallin? Yes, it was He's so awesome. Beaming. Uh, and then um, one of the guys who does the Schmodown reviews, reactions, or whatever, is Tim Franco. And he answers along with Robert Vanessa and his girlfriend Ashley, and they all sit on the couch, kind of like we do, except there's four of them, and they watch the and they answer all the questions. And so Tim got was supposed to go against uh, Robert, Robert Meyer Burnett, Burnett. Um, but because of scheduling and because Robert's scared, um, he ditched out, and so he got Matt Atchity from Rotten Tomatoes. Matt Atchity's really good. His um, job is. Mo- to review movies, right? So, for yeah. Rotten Tomatoes. I yeah. mean, he he works. He is Rotten Tomatoes, right? Yeah. Um, Tim in his first round was perfect and got the bonus. So he's the third person to ever do that. <laughs> um, he spun the wheel, uh, got Spinner's Choice, and he took crime movies. <laughs> Who picks crime movies on their own? It was awesome, yeah. and he freaking he flew right through it. I yep. think he. Uh, he missed one one point question. If you ask for multiple choice in the second round, the point total goes down from from two to one, and he missed that question. And Matt stole it, but one point steal is okay. Yeah. Um, and then uh, but he built up a big enough lead that Matt had to answer all of his questions just to get a chance for Tim Franco to actually answer the actually even answer the question. Tim didn't even have to answer a third round question. Nope. Oh, there was a TKO was out. Totally destroyed. Again, Christian, proud papa. <laughs> big, big shit eating grin on his face. It was so awesome. Uh, if you get the chance to play in the Schmodown, I'm going to give you some coaching tips. Because I've become a connoisseur of this fucking game. Might call it armchair quarterbacking. I, it's, it is Monday. It is Monday. It is Monday. Uh, when you get a lead, you always spin first. It puts all the pressure on the other team. You never defer. You always, if you are strong in a category, but it's your opponent's complete strength, you always take it. Don't be scared of them stealing points from you, because now it's off the board. Yeah. Um, pick your numbers, like go two, twenty-two, ten. Never go up the ladder. Never go one, two, three, or four, five, six. Always mix it up and go in different directions. It, it's just random, so whatever it is, it is. Right, and your third question, your third number is always going to be your five-point question. Yeah. So if you pick one, and because they think everybody's going to pick one, or, or one, two, three, and everybody's right. always going to make that their first number, those are going to be the easy questions because they're only two points. So go backwards. Yeah, go backwards. Try something different. Mix it up. Other than that, um, with... We watched both of the reactions to each match, and then they did a behind the scenes of both matches. We watched all of that. Um, we have met Robert and Vanessa, very, very nice people. But one of the things that I wanted to say, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you felt, uh, concur, is they showed themselves to be great sportsmen in a league where you're trying to act a little bit, but they handled it so well. Were, they were nervous, but they didn't show it. They they represented us, the fans, amazingly well. Yep. And I'm just... It could have gone so bad. It could have <laughs> gone so bad. Uh, I will tell you, I actually posted the Twitter this morning. Uh, I actually got a full night of sleep last night, which is a bonus. Uh, and uh, my dream last night was I was at a selection show for the Schmodown, and I got picked to be in the Inner Geekdom one. Because I'm a fucking weirdo, and I was drinking whiskey last night. So... <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it wasn't zombie dreams. It was a zombie dream, so I was like, okay. But yeah, I, I'm just way happy for them. Good job, guys. Keep it up the good work. Yay. Now drama. <laughs> we need a drama llama. We do need a drama llama. i pull it out. And, um, so the Han Solo movie is coming. There's been a lot of talk on the internet. We're going to run down as much as we can here. Um, Phil Lord and Christopher Miller were the directors of were the directors of the Han Solo movie. Right. And they've done 21 Jump Street, and they did the Lego movie, and you know, so they kind of have this comedic feel. They were brought in to bring a little bit more of a comedic feel for a Star Wars movie. 
we're three weeks from the end of principal photography being done. And Kathleen Kennedy said, get the fuck up! <laughs> uh, Fired. And you're, well, yeah, I think it was a mutual firing. Is that such a thing as a mutual firing? I don't know. They said it was mutual in the beginning, and then later... And then was, all kinds of stuff out came out. They were fired. Um, Alden... Er, Alden... Uh, Edenwright. Er, Alden... Ehrenwright. Fucking names. Um, is playing Han Solo. And uh, it came out... Actually, it was StarWarsNews.net. Uh, came out with a story that said that he, uh, uh, he went to Kathleen Kennedy... And Lord uh, Krasden, who was the the main writer, um, you know, Kasdan, not so no R N, Kasdan, Lawrence Kasdan, and uh, and he went to them and said, I don't really like the direction that Lord and Miller are going with mm. the movie, and there was a hiatus. They were on like a two week hiatus for something else, and so there was a rough cut of the movie. Put together, and they saw it. Kathleen Kennedy and and Kasdan saw it, and they went to Lord Miller and said, "Now listen, we don't really like what's going on here. Can you are you willing to make some changes? Can we bring somebody in with some fresh eyes, help you with the process?" They said, "No, we really like the way our movie is going. Let us make our movie." They had a long conversation, and in that conversation, they became it came clear that they could not fix. The relationship, and so they had a mutual front firing. So, ordinarily, I would say, let the directors make their movie. Right. If it's a stinking pile of shit, it's their fault. Yep. Except this is Star Wars. Yes. And I would say the same thing probably about Marvel. Um. <laughs> I would say the same thing about DC, except that the studio has proven that they can't um, manage it themselves, and they actually need to let their directors do it. But um, I'm thinking they're getting better. But uh, track well, record, track mm, record so far. Mm, is. But um, yeah, you don't get to go into um, a set um, uh, market. Um, uh, it's set. It's. Uh, a set story. Story. I don't know what you uh, yeah. call. I mean, it's well, it's a dynasty. You don't, I, you don't mess with canon in Star Wars. Yeah, and, and you're messing with canon with Star Wars. And they're going to be very, um, you know, they're going to let you have some um, leeway, but there's, you need to do it the way they expect it to be done. You can do some of your style. Gareth Edwards had his kind of style in Rogue One. Yeah, but they still brought somebody else in halfway through the process to be kind of a new set of eyes and kind of point him in certain directions and stuff like that. And he was like totally willing to play play uh, with working on that process. It's not broken. It's right. S Star Wars and Marvel are not broken. Right. So, um, you know, yeah, coming in and saying, nope, I'm going to do it my way and it's going to be this completely different thing. You can't you can't expect them to not come in and go no right that right. doesn't work and for they, us. and and Lord Miller are actually really good directors but their style is much more of improving there's a basic layout of the storyline but they do a lot of improving on set and their sense of humor also see, tends to be I won't say edgy because they did the Lego movie but they but there was edgy parts of the Lego movie and so yeah. uh, but uh there, you can make Han Solo funny, but he's not a comedic character. He's witty and wry, right? Not, um, you know, and yeah, satirical, right? <laughs> he's not, he's not, yeah, um, the kind of comedy from Twenty One Jump Street, the kind of um, slapsticky, yeah, yeah. almost. And this is one of the things I've, I've, I've done a lot of reading about this because, you know, Star Wars is important to me. And uh, uh, I've done a lot of reading, a lot of listening to other people's opinions and, and kind of getting... We're never going to know for sure what really, really happened. But we're trying to get a piece together. Um, but a lot of what I've read has been the conversation of 
this is not about doing a, a, a making fun of Han Solo movie. Oh, yeah. This is a Han Solo movie within the Star Wars canon universe. And so you, you just can't. You just can't do that. And, and I... 100% behind Lord Miller about sticking to the guns, let us make our movie, stop fucking with us. And I'm also 100% behind Alden Ehrenreich because... Alden Ehrenreich. Fucking get an easier name, Jesus. <laughs> um, I'm also with him because if you... If he fucks up Han Solo, he will never get a job again. Yeah. And he's too good of an actor uh, to, to never get a job again. He's taking a huge risk taking this job he's taking the huge risk like, Lord and Miller were always they're already talking about doing the Flash movie which would be amazing but um, but Alden will will be blackballed out of everything if he fucks up Han Solo yeah and so if yeah. he's going on this direction now you know there's been some reports that have come out in the last couple of days that they fired the editor like three weeks or three months ago or whatever and they brought in a new editor okay that happens they hired a, a acting coach to come out come in and help Alden Again, that happens a lot of the time. Sometimes the actor can't quite get there without an acting coach being there. And that kind of thing. So there's all kinds of stuff that's going on. Um, so that happened on Tuesday of last week. By Wednesday night, they had a replacement already. So this is probably something that they, Kathleen Kennedy and Lucasfilm kind of had an idea that might be coming down the pipeline. Yeah, it would seem like it. Like, cause it was fast. It was quick. Like, would you have Ron Howard on speed dial? I um, mean, <laughs> well, he is a buddy of George Lucas. Ron. Yeah. So they picked Ron Howard. Um, I really like Ron Howard. You typically like Ron Howard. Howard. Yep. His last yep. couple of movies haven't been great, uh, but for what needs to happen in this movie, let's be honest. He's gonna be the figurehead to kind of steer the ship and kind of keep things in place but Lawrence Kasdan is going to be the one who's going to be like the one when you do this next we need to do this next yeah. we need to do the next though he's he's um, an established director he doesn't need to prove anything right he can come in and and be the calming force to the cast and the crew who are you know I'm sure kind of freaking out on. yeah yeah um, and he doesn't need to prove anything. Um, he just needs to come in. And he has the gold freaking statues. Yeah. So he, you yeah. know, he doesn't have to prove a damn thing to anybody. No. He, yeah. Uh, he's the, the smart choice. I've heard some people with some concerns about him steering it in an older direction. This is a young Han Solo, and so they want to maybe capture. Um, the youth and Ron Howard is himself older and then you know he's done some more mature mature movies right, and, right. And, but I think at this point unless, I mean if he was going to reshoot the entire movie then maybe um, those concerns might be a yeah, little more valid yeah. but I as, as far as we've heard so far they're not reshooting the whole movie they have uh, they have three weeks of principal photography left then there'll be a break and then I think they said in August they have five weeks set aside to do reshoots, reshoots. and fill-ins and all that kind of stuff. Reshoots always happen in big budget movies. Internet, calm the fuck down. <laughs> oh my god, they're reshooting half of Rogue One! Okay, they got done with Rogue One. So, what? Fuck, I gotta, gotta remember who said the quote, but there was a, a director who said there's always three movies. There's always... When you're making your movie, it's always three movies. There's the one on paper, there's the one you shoot, and then there's the one that is actually it's the edited. <laughs> edited and put together. And sometimes what looks great on paper on the final edit doesn't work. Or you get through the process and you realize that, hey, there's a better ending here once you get the whole thing put together, which is what happened with Rogue One. They had, the, they had 60, 70% of that movie that they went back and reshot to set up the, a different ending, which... Yep worked and sometimes that happens and you and big companies like Disney like Marvel like like, like they can get away with having the ability to do this because they have the money to go back and reshoot and to make the better movie instead of Han the Solo's gonna make 750 have. million dollars here's so you could spend 300 and still make double your profit and still still be okay so 
Um, so I, I, I some questions. Are they gonna start? Um, I, what's were they gonna have something ready to show at D twenty three? Since there was really no Han Solo talk at Celebration this year, it was mostly Last Jedi and celebrating the forty year and stuff. Or Comic Con, are they gonna edit something together and not really know what it's at yet? I don't. Uh, I think that they'll just go with um, with the with what they last, have. Last Jedi. Just, uh, well, it's not supposed to come out till next May, so I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of wait on doing the push for it, at least right now. They have to talk about it a little a little bit for Han Solo. Or for Han Solo, okay. supposed to be in May of next year. Yeah, and Last Jedi comes out before. I, that, I, so. They might be able to edit something together, something small. Um, you know, like they, you know, they could. I th- yeah. They might be able to edit something small yeah. together, but I think that they're going to focus on The Last Jedi. And the only other thing that I'm, uh, I kind of heard about this on Collider Movie Talk was, um, was that they, uh, who gets the directorial credits now? <laughs> so I, I it's hmm. going to be Lord Miller Howard, or it's got to be the title card, right? Cause yeah, I mean, unless there's some they put all this work into blood, it. Yeah. I, it's their, it's partially their movie. So e- yeah. everything that I've seen. Th- there's no real bad blood there. They just decided to part ways. So yeah, I mean, if lawsuits were happening or something, I could see them pulling them out. But I think that I don't see. It's gonna make a really that. weird red carpet. Please live stream. <laughs> I want to watch. Be sitting there with a popcorn. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, so super drama uh, with Han Solo. Like I said, they've gone full DC. But the one thing about Kathleen Kennedy and the Lucasfilm group and everything is they will stop everything, fix it, and then move forward. Yep. So. Yep. I, I have full faith in them to make it right. Uh, we watched the trailer before we started the show tonight. Uh, it's about the Billie Jean King, Bobby Riggs uh, tennis match that happened in the 70s. Uh, it's called Battle of the Sexes, starring Emma Watson and Steve Carell. I like period pieces, um, and I know a lot. I don't know a lot. I mean, I'm not like versed in this, but I know the story really well of everything that happened around that tennis match and how it kind of helped change the the view of the feminist movement and women and stuff like that that we're still fighting with today. That was kind of the start of bring it into light. Oh was that yeah, match. It was, yeah. So what did yeah. you think? But what did you think of the trailer? Uh, I thought the trailer was really good. I think Steve Carell is the perfect yeah, person yeah. Um, yeah. to play Bobby Riggs. Perfect. Um, <laughs> I, um, I, I remember this happening mm-hmm. um, vividly. Uh, I actually they went on the road after the tennis match. Um, they actually came. I grew up outside of um, Phoenix in like a suburb called Fountain Hills. And they actually brought it to our tennis club, and uh, they Billie Jean King wasn't there, I don't believe, but Bobby Riggs was, and then it was like celebrities went on this road show, um, and Lloyd um, uh, Bridges, uh, Jeff Bridges' dad, yeah, um, and Bo Bridges' dad was there, and um, that was really a big deal. But I I remember all of this um, happening, so I I. I think it's it, cool. It looks really cool. It good, cool. Good. <laughs> it's cool and good all together. Uh, cool. Um, it looks it looks really cool. And and although we like big budget movies, we also like we also like historical period pieces. Kind of. I, I think that I'm, I'm much more drawn to that than say like a thriller or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Outside of you know the Marvel movies and DC and all that kind of stuff. But right. I, I it looks really good. Um, I actually we kind of joked, um, and your front runner for the Oscar season is is called Battle of the Sexes. Yep. Until we go see Dunkirk, uh, <laughs> some TV stuff uh, that we have going on. Uh, we did our Doctor Who review of uh, uh, the world enough and time. That's what it is. Uh, it's the uh, first of the two part finale. Um, all the feels. We did a full review. It's on the channel. I'll tag it on the end of this video. Please go give it a watch. Uh, and and I have I have one thing to say because we didn't yes, find it out until okay. afterwards, and I'm not gonna spoil it. So if you haven't seen it, wait, this, I have a sign. It's it's not. I'm not spoiling it. But if you have seen it, 
and you know what happens at the end. Now you know why there is a tear on on their, their little Cyber, Cyber Man. mask. Yeah. Right, right there. Yeah. All the feels. Because fuck you, Moffat. <laughs> uh, and then we finally finished Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We did a whole big binge of the second half of the season. Uh, we kind of did this with Flash and Arrow and, and Le- Legends. We're going to do a, a quick rundown of the season. Not give any given spoilers away kind of thing, but we're just going to talk about it real quick because I thought from what some people said, I actually liked this season a lot. I, I did too. I definitely liked the second half. I, I mean, they were, I don't know, whatever. I liked the the two part season. It worked. Yeah. It worked here. They actually wrote it to be a two part season. Well, and and we've talked before in other in other shows about how sometimes the seasons are just too long, and it feels like their episodes are yeah. dragging out just to fill time because it's a twenty five episode season, and it should have yeah. been a, a fifteen episode season. Yeah. And so to break up, break it up into two different storylines, and then you're not trying to remember what the heck happened three months ago. Right, right. There was one continuous thing, and, and normally I would say plot line, but there's actually a continuous. There was actually a book. It was called The Dark Hold, um, and this book was like the connective tissue through both the first half of the season and the second half of the season. The first half of the season dealt with um, Robbie Reyes's Ghost Rider, so we got the Charger and. Uh, Gabriel was here. The guy who plays uh, Robbie Reyes was here for Comic Con. Um, really, really cool season of like ten episodes. It could have, like we we're saying, it's a really cool ten episode season, twelve episode season. Um, really cool storyline. Uh, introducing the Ghost Rider. Rumor has it he was coming back for next season, so that would be kind of cool. He's a much better Ghost Rider than Nicholas Cage. Yes, yes, I will. <laughs> There will be never ever be an argument about that. Um, that was a money grab. It wasn't really. Uh, yeah, he had taxes to pay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Still, uh, but that part, that season of the of them getting Daisy back into the fold and the Ghost Rider stuff and the, them dealing with the Dark Hole because this book can only be read by like gods. Essentially, just melts your mind and does all this stuff. And it was just a really kind of cool mini season it was just a lot of fun they went on the christmas break it took like a month and um, two weeks off or six weeks or something like that total and then they came back in the second half and they did um lmds the life model decoys Decoys. um which is a big part of the marvel lexicon that's the word i was looking for and uh they they've they've taken they turn they make robots. They make completely androids that are full of your memories. And so yeah. they can just be plugged in anywhere. And that's a big part of the Marvel lexicon and, and the storyline within Marvel. And uh, they did it in the second half of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. this year. And they, like, replaced everybody with robots. And they... You're never sure who is... Yeah, yeah. Real and who is Memorex and... <laughs> oh, it's so, it's so awesome. And then they go to uh, kind of Matrixy or whatever. They go to another... They had to... Uh, uh, the host bodies, the original versions of yourself, had to be plugged into this thing so that you wouldn't show up. Right. With your decoy standing there. And uh, and it's very Matrixy. And within that matrix, uh, they 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 tried to program it so that it was your perfect life, yeah. so you wouldn't fight your way out of it. Is essentially what it was. And in that perfect life, all of the members of Shield are now agents of Hydra. Well, not all of them. Well, okay, a Coulson lot. was a it was a freaking high school teacher. High school teacher. <laughs> yeah. And, and, but it was just, it was, I, it's, I heard, I, I read some stuff. John Schnapp actually talked about it quite a bit on Heroes, at least more than once. So that's quite a bit for him. Uh, about how he just was out on the whole Matrix thing. I thought it made a complete sense with the LMDs and the storyline made sense. And this season really dealt with, at least the second half of the season really dealt with um, uh, Fitzsimmons, 
So Fitz yeah. and Simmons. Yes. And I was shipping them big time this year. Uh, but every season seems to deal with one person and their backstory and and everything. Yeah. We had, you know, we had Daisy one year. We had Coulson one season. So, But this one was about Fitzsimmons and their relationship and their hardship because of what happens within the matrix of everything. It's just, I thought it was really cool. I just thought it was really cool. Yeah, well I mean, I get, I, I kind of get, I guess, that um, it's not, it's almost not a Marvel show anymore. I mean, that's, um, they, you know, there's the LMDs and, yeah. and mutants yeah. and there are pieces, but there's no, there's no Captain Rogers and there's no Hulk and there's no Iron Man, but they can't do that. Right. The TV so, universe and the, Mar and the, cinema universe the movie universe don't coexist right they reference each other like in defenders they reference stuff that's going on but yeah they're kind of uh, forced to you know to stay a little safer yeah little... and there's some stuff that they can't do because sony owns all the x-men universe stuff right. so they can't even bring any of that stuff in uh there's some stuff at the end of the season that sets up next season. I'm really interested to see what happens there because it looks like it's going to directly tie into Inhumans. Right, because they're moving Inhumans and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to Fridays. Fridays. And so the current timing is Inhumans, the first two episodes are going to be on IMAX in the theater, which I think is going to be really awesome. Um, they're going like, to run them together, I believe. Uh, and then they're going to show those two episodes on ABC. And then the whole season is supposed to be eight episodes. And then when that's done in January, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. are going to take in from there. Right. And do and see. And I fully expect this to be the last season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's kind of run its course a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think they're just doing it to kind of bring in the Inhumans and yeah and then see how that goes. Inhumans has been part of the, the show the kind of the whole way I mean oh yeah and stuff yeah. but having the show Inhumans itself but then they don't I mean they're not uh, dedicating a whole season to a show that may or may not work right I mean, right I, I'm well, not Inhuman sure how much faith they have in it putting it all on Fridays in so. Inhuman Inhumans was supposed to be a movie and they took it off the docket and then they did this eight episode series and they're putting money into it if you've seen any of the pictures and anything it's amazing yeah so yeah it looks really good but if it doesn't work out they didn't you know it, it was eight episodes or you know half a season or whatever right. they put shield in for the second half and then they just go yeah and put something else in we'll, we'll, do, we'll work on the Netflix stuff so yeah like I said, a lot of stuff going on right now, and a lot of you know, we talked. About, we, I wanted to talk more about the drama of Han. We could do a whole hour on Han Solo. There's, there's so much <laughs> stuff going on, uh, but we wanted to let you know all the stuff that's going on, the stuff that we found interesting, and how we really enjoyed Shield this year. <laughs> and we're going to Baby Driver on Friday, so we'll do a Baby Driver uh, review, review on Saturday. On Saturday, and uh, and then we'll do Doctor Who Sunday. We better find out. It better not be the Christmas episode, Moffat. I want to know who the new doctor is. Uh, so what do you guys think? Like this video. Please leave us a comment. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You, YouTube? YouTube. YouTube. Kadoodled. Uh, please, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I've been talking for too long. Uh, and please follow us on Facebook. We're at the Pop Culture Cult. Uh, on Instagram, we're Pop Culture Cult 1. And on Twitter, we're at pop underscore cult. Please like, subscribe, all of our channels and pages. Uh, and we're boosting to 100 subscribers. We're at 84. Almost we're so close. Almost and we're there. almost at 200 on Facebook. So please like and subscribe to our pages. All the links will be in the description. And until next time, good night now.